time to wash the car. And uh, what do I wash it with? Binder. Pretty happy with the Binder products. And uh, we actually stock them now. They're on our website. But uh, today, I, I thought I'd just mention Binder in a sense of um, snow foam. So there is no Binder snow foam. Uh, of course, you've got uh, Fireball is another one we recommend. What I do is uh, use the pre-wash and the car shampoo together. And these two make a really good snow foam in the foamy cannon. I'll grab it out now. And we use two caps of the uh, premium pre-wash. One, two. And then a dash of the Binder Premium Car Shampoo. There we go, and that'll make a perfect snow foam. Let's give it a go. something I'm pretty sure everyone will see it here behind us yeah. stubby holder from <laughs> overtaking lane a good start um, no certainly uh, something I've had for a little while now mm -hmm. and, and today we're going to talk a little bit about the story of of where it all started with the Ute yeah because this is the the most recent modified car you've had for for a, a long time you had uh, motorbikes for a bit there and then you got back into the cars so yeah, look, I, I've owned a lot of cars mm -hmm. over my time, you know, a lot of different Holdens, Commodores, uh, what have I had, VK Commodore, VN Commodore, um, started out VE in the panel Commodore, van. A, yeah, started out HZ panel van, we had a HG Premier, um, well, there's heaps there, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, they've had small bits of work done to them, I guess, and yeah. just make them look nice. And, all, all big cruisers really, nothing major. Mm -hmm. um, this one we went a little bit further. It's not over the top, it's still only just mildly worked. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's had a little bit more work done. And then, as you're right, I, I spent a lot of time on bikes as well. So, yeah. um, my sports bikes, had my ZZRs, and then uh, the Harley, um, which I customised the Harley, did a bit of work to that. Had a, uh, a mate, um, Deffy, who did uh, all the airbrushing on it. And, uh, we did a bit of work to that and mm -hmm. then I ended up swapping uh, the Harley for this yeah. um, it was fairly standard mm -hmm. when when I got it um, it was a young guy in the um, he was in the Air Force I think he was a diesel mechanic and uh, yeah we did a we did a trade mm -hmm. and um, it uh, it was fairly standard it had the Pontiac front end on it yeah then so um, which was done um, by JHP so originally car was uh, JHP uh, in uh, Melbourne that's who that was their work car a little demo okay. car mm -hmm. it uh, they put the X-Force uh, full stainless system on it mm -hmm. um, had the short shifter kit the hard lid locking hard lid the Pontiac front end um, the triple SL uh, suspension so they'd done all that and I yeah. and it was sort of their work cute I guess uh, but it was in very good condition then um, the young fella uh, from the Air Force got it from them mm -hmm. and uh, he just maintained it, hadn't done very many Ks in it at all. So yeah, and still pretty low nowadays as well, right? 90,000, so there's 90,000 on it. Um, it is an 07, so uh, what's that, 13 years old now? Yeah. That's my math. Mm -hmm. 13 years old now, so uh, it's still, yeah, might look a little bit modern, but they're certainly not mm. get, starting to get on. Yeah. And um, and then and then after you got it, what was sort of the first thing you did to it? Was it was it wheels? I can't remember. 
Um, I, I don't remember either, I guess. It was just little bits and pieces, I think. Um, just started, I got into Club VE, yeah. uh, and then saw a lot of nice VEs in there. And then, uh, you know, you start to get the bugger. Met a lot of lot of good people through there, a lot of friends. Um, as we sort of moved to the Gold Coast at the same time. Yeah. And uh, got to know a few people through Club VE. And then it was just a lot of little bits and pieces, you know. I think I did the, um, got rid of the cold air intake, went the OTR. Uh, it had a, like, cold air that went down uh, behind the fog lights. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, a lot of people said, get rid of that. I've seen a few suck up water and... Not yeah. that this sees much rain or, no. or wet weather, but um, but yeah, no. I, I guess it was just little bits and pieces, little dress up things, and yeah. Um, and then the, the stereo, so I changed out the the stereo, and uh, put put the amp in. Just one I just had sitting around. I think that amp I whacked in uh, myself, mm -hmm. um, and I grabbed that that subwoofer box in for behind the seat. So I got that for about 150 bucks off. Gum tree, I think. Yeah, and it's it's perfectly. It was made for it. It was made for it, literally. So yeah, yeah so he pulled it out of his, and um, yeah, we 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 put that in there. So <laughs> uh, that worked well, and uh, yeah, put me through a couple of subs in it, and why yeah. she went. And uh, and and when you when you did decide it was time to sort of do a bit more with the motor, where where did we go and what did we do? Well, it was back in the day of CBS Performance. We're still floating around and. Um, uh, he did nothing wrong by me, he looked after me, mm -hmm. uh, certainly, and, and this has been very good, very reliable, the work that he did through there. So we did a uh, Stage 3 uh, CBS cam package, mm -hmm. which is, uh, hang on, I had to put it down because I always forget, 239243, yeah. so it's a fairly sizable cam. Uh, we did the, um, the springs, uh, so just the Lenati spring kit at the same time, did the oil pump. Um, the timing kit, LS7 lifters, um, cam bolts, um, yeah, I think, what else we do? Oh, the clutch as well, so put the uh, NPC heavy duty clutch in yep. as well, and um, yeah, I think we pushed it out uh, on the dyno at 4.36, I don't know, maybe we'll cut to the dyno sheet of what it actually is, I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a dyno sheet there, I'll pull it out. Um, but it's, it was never about uh, big horsepower, yeah. although that's quite respectable and I'm really happy with what it's got. That's not what, it, what I was chasing, it was just a really nice lump. Yeah, but you just wanted the sound. Definitely, uh, you know, I was rolling into a lot of car shows. It's a very tidy car and it looks good and I've, and I've maintained it well. So, I've always gone into car shows and, and hanging out with mates uh, with some very nice uh, cars always had me at car shows most weekends anyway even before doing the YouTube stuff of course mm -hmm. and um, yeah I just you roll in it looks good and just wanted it to sound good as well so and it does you know people turn their head now and have a look and say oh what's that so yeah so it, it sounds good just lumping in on idle you know hmm. so. um, and, and I guess where did, where did the passion for Holden specifically start because you've got two we won't talk about the other one today, but you have two Holdens, so where did the passion for Holdens start? Well, Why Holdens, I, I think it was just, gr I grew up in a Holden family. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I guess it was bred into me. I, I don't know. Uh, uh, my stepdad uh, was always a Holden man, and, mm -hmm. and I just, yeah, followed suit, I, I guess. So, um, uh, my dad's actually a, a, a Ford man, but, uh, you know, growing up with my stepdad, certainly, um, that's where the influence came from. Yeah. And, and what about the passion for cars? I, look, I think it was just a young fella growing up um, in the time of... Uh, my favourite movie was Running on Empty. Uh, I would watch that. You know, when we were sitting at home as a young teenager, it, I would watch that a half a dozen times in a day. It would hit rewind. Rewind, that was a thing we used to have to do with tapes back then um, on the VCR. Rewind it, watch it again, and we uh, knew it word for word. I'd sit there with my mates, and we'd do all the lines while <laughs> while watching it. And then um, a lot of the guys I knocked around with and grew up with, it was I, I guess through them and older brothers and and stuff like that that we would go out cruising. And uh, in Toowoomba in the day, it was uh, go lapping on Ruffin Street. Yeah. And you know we'd head out on a Thursday night or Friday night and go lapping or um, cruise up to the mobile at the top of the range for a burger. 
we'll, you know, go for a cruise to the Gold Coast or a pack of Chewy, whatever we do. We just wanted to get out in our cars. Yeah. And there was a lot of very cool cars up in Toowoomba hmm. growing up, and there still is today. It's very, actually probably more today. Bloody heap of nice cars. Because uh, all those young fellas from back in my day that were making cars look good and doing a bit of work uh, now are going right into it. Yeah. Because it was, it was quite different back then growing up too. Like someone had a 12 second car on the quarter, that was, everyone knew that person. They were a big name. Yeah. You know, that was a big thing to have a 12 second car. Um, now, like seven eight seconds right yeah yeah now it's completely different it's the seven or eight seconds today is what what that 12 second car was like you know i remember telling stories of uh you know people i knew with a nine second car and stuff and people wouldn't believe it they were like oh there's no way that you could have a nine second street car and <laughs> um like they would argue with you and it was, hmm. was that's how, un, how unheard of it was so yeah. um not that it wasn't there certainly was but it was big bucks it yeah. was a lot of work and a lot of dollars, and and um, it wasn't as easy to do it as what it is today. Yeah, I think so. Uh, there's a lot of people modifying cars today, and whether it's just you know throwing a cam in and making mm. them sound good, or or actually going all the way in and, and getting some really good you know good times uh, from full full work, you know, it happens yeah. as well. So um, you know, I think it, just the cam package in this was quite cheap for mm. me to do that um actually hang on i've still got the receipt it's on my <laughs> phone i'll go back uh i can tell you that was uh the clutch as well and the cam and all the bits and pieces uh, that cost me um sixty eight hundred dollars so less than seven grand that was um the oil oil pump the clutch the all those bits and pieces when we when we did that so mm. um it just goes to show that was dyno everything so under under seven grand to do That's all that right. work a bit cheaper than what it is to do your rb isn't it and still beat you <laughs> yes probably now uh, definitely if you do that future plans for this do you have any future plans or are you sort of happy with where it is or well, or is it just if you get chopped by a certain white skyline that maybe there'll be some <laughs> plans in the future then no no look i don't worry about getting chopped um it doesn't bother me at all. Uh, um, Mal, of course, has chopped me in mm. his hairdresser car out on the track, and um, that doesn't worry me. It's uh, I, I love driving it. It sounds good. It's exactly how I wanted it. Would I do more? Yes, yeah. but it's money. Yeah, you know, because once you start to go past that tipping point as well, then you really start to throw more and more dollars in, right? Like. Like, yeah. yes, I can say it's it is cheap. Right? Yeah, correct. Like, yes, it's cheaper to throw bucks in these days, and we can we can do this uh, in somewhat of a budget to this level. Once you start going 500, 600 plus horsepower, then there's all the other things. That yeah, you got to do more to your brakes, more to your suspension. Yeah. Oh, well, actually, I've done the brakes. That's another thing I did do to this. Yeah. Good, good, good point. We put the Rembrandts on here. Mm -hmm. So I um, upgraded the brakes on, on this. What was yeah. It? There's no use having all the all the extra power if you can't stop right so correct correct yeah and then we just did the dress up you know just trying to make it look at them always just i don't know i just like them to look good you know mm. the, the show car people like to come and have a look at them pop the bonnet um but yeah sorry back to what you're saying would it do more i wouldn't mind having um boost on it mm -hmm. yeah what kind of boost this supercharger or Turbo. Turbo or Procharger? <laughs> no, Turbo. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, you know, I've, I've got um, plenty of mates with Superchargers, had Superchargers, um, Prochargers, um, and Turbos, I guess, as well. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I think I just like the, the Turbo. Boost. Yeah. Yeah. So the Supercharger is probably the easiest way to go. Yeah. Uh, probably, possibly cheaper. I don't know. I haven't really researched into it. Might be much of a muchness, but... Um, yeah, I think, uh, I don't know, I just like the look of the turbo hanging off the side of it. Yeah. A set of twins would look good in there. <laughs> but, uh, uh, look, just big bucks. Yeah. Big bucks. And, um, and the question that you always ask, which we already mentioned what your first car was, but I'm going to ask it a little bit differently. What did you do to your first car? The HZ panel van, what was the first mod you ever did? 
my first mod was if you can remember probably a set of speakers uh, stereo on a set of speakers and um, I think it was a set of uh, house stereo speakers in the back <laughs> of the panel van so uh, <laughs> hooked up to the to the clarion the clarion which was uh, pretty fancy clarion tape deck I did get a clarion tape deck it was a second hand one it wasn't a new one but um, the clarion uh, had um, uh, was cassette deck and it had this um, feature where you could hit fast forward and it would stop at the next song so it was like skip on a CD, yeah. right? So um, um, normally you'd have to try and find the spot, fast forward stop, fast forward stop. But uh, this one actually stopped for you in each one. So you could skip songs. Yeah. Yeah, which was pretty cool. Um, but that was probably the first mod. And then uh, wheels, maybe the wheels were first. I don't know, a set of mags. Yeah. Uh, I inherited the, um, the HZ. That was, um, was my parents' car uh, originally. They... They had another, and then it was time for me to get my first car, and then um, that's where it, that's where it came from. So hmm. it was it just two hundred two in that, um, yeah. and then I think we put a set of extractors on it and uh, three fifty holly over the time, and um, yeah, by the end it used to suck a lot of fuel actually for a <laughs> six cylinder. It was quite expensive to run, but uh, but it, it was cool. You know, we had the you know of course the mattress in the back. And, uh, it was a PV. It was, I've always, I really like it and would love another panel van because it was just great to go fishing or go yeah. to a mate's and you sleep in the back. It was, yeah. you, you had your, your little home away from home mm. all the time and, and it, every weekend was always off somewhere sleeping in the back of the panel van at a mate's place or in town after a night out at the clubs or, or whatever, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think Obviously at, at times my cheap. brother used to have to fight him because he'd be asleep already in the back and <laughs> fight over who got there who got there first. <laughs> they were not very not very cheap nowadays though. No, no, I think um, I think the panel van sold for about two grand mm -hmm. in the end, and um, it look it had a bit of cancer um, in the plenum and the, you know it was pretty major then. I guess it's something we would just fix now. Um, it was sort of like oh no, go get get rid of it no good and it had been patched before and uh and it started to come back and so it was like get rid of it and two grand um had a big dint in the side of it at the time um it was uh, a young girl driving it one day and uh she turned the corner in front of a guy coming down the hill on a bike didn't see him a push bike and he went straight into the side of the panel van and put a big dint in it uh <laughs> he hit it hard um, poor fella, um, but uh, it was still in it when we sold it. It was two grand, yeah. So uh, the things you know, I'd love to have it still now. Yeah, you would never sell it for two grand. You know, the HG Premier, um, that was a beautiful car with no rust. Uh, it had um, dragway Indies on it, and um, it was really, really nice car. It did need paint because the paint uh, had crazy crack through it, mm -hmm. but. Um, uh, it was it was a nice car. I really loved driving. It was a great cruiser. We sold that for fifteen hundred dollars, like yeah. with no rust, not a spot of rust in that thing. It was uh, it was pretty pretty good shell. Mm. Uh, you know things that you look back on. Yeah. Go maybe around. who knows? Maybe we filmed the shell nowadays. You never know. Yeah. Yeah. It's um. Oh, I scary the things the, the things we've let let go of and and everyone's got those stories. I think you know, around my age. We, things they've had and things they wish they kept yeah so um, I don't know throw us a comment tell us what was the one you wished you kept yeah that's a good one
and I think that's a pretty good story and we've definitely got another one to talk about on another day. Well, what would that be? <laughs> we might have to um, go and throw it up in the hoist and have a good look. Hmm. So, I think, um, yeah, I don't know if I missed anything else. It does have the, as I said, the um, uh, the brake upgrade, the X-Force um, stainless steel headers, stainless steel system through, um, I have changed it at the back. So we got rid of the, the X-Force mufflers at the back and put a set of resonators on um, and three inch tips. That's, uh, I did that just to get the tips, just to make sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, tips for the P. There we went. But uh, yeah, it gave it a real nice sound. Yeah. Uh, I really love the way they sound. Everyone as long as you're behind it. Yeah, 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 smell. <laughs> Maybe the skyline, I don't know. <laughs> we had a bit of a... Bit of a uh, yeah, I want to get out to Royal Racing when everything's back on. Or the drags. To see which one's the quickest. Drags. We should, yeah, get out there and have a go and, and see which one is quicker. This has got a bit more horsepower. Hmm. Um, but yours is a different power, isn't it? Yeah. So be interesting different to see in, it in every way in the way it comes on and delivery yeah so, see what happens see how we go just yeah. for a bit of fun anyways and uh, what are you guys doing this is obviously what we're doing um, through corona lockdown mm -hmm. and uh, what, what are you guys doing what's keeping you busy in your shed and uh, have you got something for us to come around and have a chat like this we'll let us know yeah well, you're, you're allowed two visitors a, in Queensland drop so a comment. one two yeah we'll stay our socially distant distance mm -hmm. away and um, yeah, drop a comment send us a message on Facebook Instagram send us an email yep whichever one works for you that's uh, info at overtakinglane.com.au is the email that's yeah. the quickest one so if you like how uh, how the clean came up then um, binder yep jump on that you may have heard me mention that before mm -hmm. occasionally have mentioned it mm -hmm. just a couple of times but uh, uh, overtakinglane.com.au slash shop is where you'll find that so. yeah get on that and it's uh, it's pretty cheap and it, it's just just good stuff for someone uh, at home yeah of course and that's it anyways Thanks for watching everyone. Make sure you hit subscribe. Smash like. that like button. Yeah. Smash the like button. And uh, that's pretty much it. Keep watching. There's another video coming up very soon. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Stay in the right lane. <laughs>